Hello, Matt Thompson with you on AFL.com.au. Well, day five of the Chris Judd story after an epic tribunal hearing last night. The drama has continued today with Judd's manager, Paul Connors, hitting out at the AFL over the handling of the case and in particular taking aim at Adrian Anderson, the football operations manager of the league, and also Mark Fraser, the chairman of the match review panel. The AFL denying any kind of interference in the independent process that is the MRP and the tribunal. And in fact, Adrian Anderson didn't rule out taking legal action against Paul Connors if he refused to apologise for those comments earlier today. We can tell you, though, that late today, Connors has issued an apology. Here is how the day unfolded. You've got the head of that match review panel making comments before the case is even heard. I just can't remember that happening before where Mark Fraser goes on AFL.com, um, you know, talking about it. Then you've got the head of the football, you know, Adrian Anderson. If he hasn't been speaking to Fraser and telling, you know, the world why this had to go direct to the tribunal, you know, I'll go he. Just another case of AFL interference for mine. So do you think he got a fair hearing last night? Oh, how could he? I think Blind Freddy, would, if you understand that defamatory means something that's sort of, you know, unfairly damaging to someone's reputation or or the institution, then I think those comments are, you know, without question, have been uh, offensive and um, wrong and um, very disappointing. Today, Coach Brett Ratton was backing his man and bristled at broader questions about the Blues' tackling techniques. Knowing Chris, I can vouch for Chris every day of the week. I think he's uh, one of the finest people that I've met, not just in football, but in life. He's um, very level-headed. You know, he's a great family man, and uh, the way that uh, he has empathy for people is, um, you know, he's, he's outstanding. I, I, I raise my voice, and I probably find that pretty, um, pretty average that we go down that path to try and isolate it onto our football club when... We could show your vision everywhere and the different angles that there is in the competition. There's, tack there's tackles that could come under enormous scrutiny. Carlton has ruled out an appeal. Judd's absence, though, could mean game over for the Blues season. It's a bit like snakes and ladders, isn't it? We, we go up the ladder and then we come back down because of cir circumstances. It was Friday the 13th last week, so I thought that just uh, that worked uh, really hand in glove with... Uh, yeah, that date. Also not appealing, the Kangaroos. They say there's no grounds to challenge Jack Zebel's four-match ban, but the wider footy community reckons Zebel was harshly dealt with. Yeah, I, you know, he's stiff, I think. That's all I can say. He's, uh, he's stiff to get four weeks for that. It's a tricky one because obviously I can't comment and, um, you know, we're somewhat gagged a bit as, as senior coaches to be able to make comment on, on decisions. But, um, you know, we, we instruct our players to go really hard at the ball. So it's a question of balance, and I think the balance is pretty much right. It has to be look at not only the intent, but also the outcome, and also the prior record. And I think they're the sorts of things people understand if you get in trouble in any sort of disciplinary system, should be taken into account. By their own admission, the Cats are in uncharted territory in seventh spot, but Steve Johnson isn't prepared to lay the blame on anyone. Oh, no, not really. I think... Um you know, no one's really responsible individually for, for our performances so far. But in saying that, we're in a position where we can still um, challenge in the finals. And, and we're confident, as I said, if we put in a good performance this week against Essendon, it might just get the ball rolling for us. Someone who is taking responsibility, though, is Cyril Rioli, relishing the opportunity to fill the void left in the absence of Buddy. Uh, yeah, it sort of gives me a bit of space in the 450 with, with Buddy out. So. <laughs> Uh, no, nah, it's you know we we do, we do miss him and we want him back as soon as we can. But you know, at the same time, I think it gives other guys a chance to just step up. Be warned, the Swans have more in store despite their impressive top of the table form. There's, there's certainly areas uh, on the weekend that as a, as a midfield group and both both as a team and individually that uh, you know we need to improve on. Coming off a career high 42 possessions against West Coast, Hanbury hopeful he's over his ongoing shoulder woes. Yeah, you sort of lose two pre-seasons of strength work because it takes you forever to get that, that full strength back. And um, yeah, I'm still I'm still actually playing catch up with that with that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, so far so good, and hopefully uh, they they can stay strong for years to come. Fresh from their first win of the year, the Gold Coast Suns are now talking up the Q clash with predictions the contest against the Lions will one day become another league institution. 
I love watching those games, you know, West Coast and Frio and, as I say, the two Adelaide sides and, and now hopefully the two Sydney sides will have that and I'm sure the two Queensland sides will have that. We look forward to really building on that and that's going to be a really powerful game, I reckon, uh, in a few years to come where we'll, the game will be a sellout. People will be wanting to get in to see it. While Cloak and Boak remain the most talked about out-of-contract stars, negotiations between Adelaide and Kurt Tippett continue to drag on. And any hopes the Eagles had of Mark Lacroix making a miracle return this season have been dashed by Club Medicos. And that is a wrap on the footy news this Wednesday. A very busy day. Keep clicking back for more footy news as it comes to hand.